Hello and welcome to part 2 of my creating a 2D game in Java tutorial. Uh, we left off after creating the main game loop here, which is update, render and draw. Very basic game loop, but it basically satisfies everything that I need at this moment. You can always update your source code later on. Mind keep an original copy though, or... Well, it just sometimes mucks up. And now we need to define each of these functions. So first of all, we have our update. Now this function, I'm just going to keep empty just now, but that basically is where all your game logic goes. You're probably going to do that in your entity class also. This object, do, uh, do logic, but that will be filled with like loops saying all entities do objects or all entities which require ob uh, logic do logic. So it basically updates everything that needs updated logically, wise, etc. Game state, whatever. And then our next one, which actually has some code in it, is our render function. Uh, where is it? Let void render. Can't type. And this one is basically where we draw to the back buffer. This doesn't draw it to the screen yet, so anything you put here without calling the draw function, it will just remain at the back buffer. First of all, we need to get our graphics component, which we defined up at the very top, if you remember. Uh, I'm not going to show you it because it means I need to move my screen capture. Okay, so graphics, which is a graphics variable, if I type graphics. So buffer which is our buffer strategy and then we get the draw graphics from that which allows us to draw to the buffer then we do uh, graphics no graphics and this is where we set the color to the background color which is white you could probably store this color as a variable if you want you to and then just say like background pass that in as a color it's up to you and then we fill the screen with the color white fill rectangle. so from screen position zero zero that's the top left corner zero zero all the way to the frame width and the frame height which paints white over everything that's already on the screen and allows us to paint new stuff on which happens here paint stuff okay now the last function on the game canvas which we need is our draw function public void draw first of all we need to make sure that the buffer still has what we drew to it. So if not buffer dot contents lost. So that returns true if its contents have been lost. So if it's not true it must be false. So if there's contents there then what we want to do is show it which puts it on the screen. Uh, show. And then uh, I think that's yeah. Put on the screen, and then we do another F. If there's still graphics, so if the graphics content's still there, since we already get a new draw graphics every render cycle, if the graphics are still there, so if they're not equal to nil, then what we're going to do is delete them. I'm well, not delete, it dispose, which is just the same as deleting them. And that's the game canvas class. I'll now pause and set up my next class, which is the game frame. Okay, so now we're going on to do the game frame class, which is the frame which encapsulates our game panel. Not game panel, game canvas even. So public class game frame. This is where main is. So public static uh, void main. Pass in the arguments.
Right, so first thing we do is, even though we probably shouldn't mix swinging AWT components, I'm going to do it anyway because it worked. So I'm going to keep it if it works. So first of all we create a new JFrame. Just call it frame equal to new JFrame. And then just put whatever title you want. So I'll just put 2D game. Capital G. And I need to import the swing. Okay, then the frame has to set ignore repaint as well so that you don't draw a background or whatever over it. Set so ignore repaint to true. The frame, we can set the bounds, which you want to keep the same as the drawing panel bounds. So we could, in fact, make variables up here that say end frame width again, which is 800, and end frame height, which again equals 600, just so that they're the same and everything's the same size. We could also use the pack function, but when I was doing this, I didn't really know how it worked very well, so I'm going to do it this way because I know it definitely works. So f width and f height. And then we can just set the default close up uh, close operation as JFrame exit on close. That's probably not the best way to exit because if we exit there threads still running, etc. But just don't exit the game or figure out the better way to do it. I, I know there definitely is a better way to do that, so if you want some research or want to improve the game, have a look into that. Then what we do is we make a new game canvas. Just say game, new game canvas. And then frame.add so we add the game to the frame, which calls the add notify in Game Canvas. Um, there, that calls add notify, and then last but not least, we set the frame visible. Now, hopefully, we should be able to call a frame, and it'll work. Fingers crossed. So let's run it and th there is a frame if you can see that there's a frame there 2d game okay uh thanks for watching this part of the tutorial in the next part we'll go over loading sprites um well images make them into sprites thank you